Hebrews chapter 11 uh, is really known to most of us as Christians as the hall of faith. And as I was thinking about um, kind of this thought, this message, this maybe series of messages uh, talking about faith um, and the hall of faith, I was thinking about uh, like there's a hall of fame for football, there's a hall of fame for baseball, um, and who gets into those things? Does everybody get into the Hall of Fame? No, no, everybody doesn't get in the Hall of Fame. I mean, there's some uh, guys who I think should be in the Hall of Fame, and, you know, they've made some mistakes like all of us has, and, and they probably won't get in the Hall of Fame for those reasons, and that's not my decision to make or all of that. But there's, you know, you get in the Hall of Fame in sports and in baseball or football or uh, I guess basketball has a Hall of Fame. I don't know. I don't follow professional basketball. But anyway, in baseball and football, there is a Hall of Fame, and usually every year there'll be inductees into the Hall of Fame. And usually those people who go into the Hall of Fame are players, or it could be coaches, uh, who, are, who have excelled in their particular uh, sport, okay? Uh, you know, there's, they, they, maybe they knocked a bunch of home runs, or they were just an outstanding uh, infielder, or, you know, whatever it might be, pitcher, you know, whatever, catcher, whatever it might be. But they're, they're inducted in the Hall of Fame because of their athleticism, whatever it might be, and those types of things, and, and, and how they played the game. Well, I want to talk to you about this thought, about us thinking about these next few weeks maybe, uh, talking about um, how we, everybody say me. Me. Everybody say me again. Okay, so me, as a Christian, as a believer, how I can get inducted into the Hall of Faith. Okay, how I can become a part of the hall of faith. I know we can't be put in the word of God. God is, his inspired word has been uh, given and we have that and we know that there's people that are talked about in the hall of faith and we'll talk about some of those over the next course of the next several weeks. But I'm telling you as people of faith, people who know Jesus Christ, we are a part of the hall of faith. As we, as we experience and as we live out our faith in Jesus Christ, we become a part of what what we would call the hall of faith. So we're going to spend the next few weeks talking about faith. Uh, and um, I'm going to share some things. And if you take notes, I'll try to go slow enough for you to write these down. Uh, my computer's not working right, so I didn't get the stuff to David like I should have. It's not his fault, so uh, you blame that on me, okay? So we're going to talk about faith. Everybody say faith. Faith, faith and here's the, here's the title of this first part. Faith, believing... Everybody say believing. believing. Believing without seeing. Believing without seeing. And we're talking about faith. So stand to your feet. We'll read from Hebrews chapter 11. A few verses there to begin with. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to look at beginning verse number 1. If you're there, say Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1 says this, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report or good testimony. Verse number 3, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of, words of God or word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Kind of knocks in the head the big bang theory, doesn't it? Look at, look at the next verse, verse number four. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he, being dead, still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Notice verse six. But without What's the word? Faith. It is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let's pray. Father, we give you these next few minutes. They're not ours anyway to give. We just, we just surrender them to you. We 
ask that, God, these next few moments, that, Lord, only your words would be spoken. God, the only, only, we would only hear directly from you. God, that you would do a work in all of our hearts that is life-changing and transforming, uh, that is enlightening to us, that God encourages us. But, yes, Lord, convicts us and convinces us of who we need to be and who we're not. God, help us to make those changes. Help us to live according to your will. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. Be seated, okay? So faith. Faith is confidence in God that leads to obedience to God. Listen to it. Faith is confidence in God that leads to obedience to God. That's a quote from Warren Wiersbe, a, a commentator, very... Uh, he, he's very, one. If, you, if you follow commentaries at all, he is one of those great ones. Uh, faith is confidence in God that leads to obedience to God. Faith is confidence in the trustworthiness of God. Faith is confidence in the trustworthiness of God. Can we count on God? Can we believe God? Is God, uh, is God someone that's going to tell us one thing and do something else? Absolutely not. Our faith is confidence in the trustworthiness of God. He is a promise keeper. God doesn't say anything and he doesn't put forth anything that he's not going to do. If it's in his will and his character, he is going to do it and he can do it. True faith is based on what God says and is demonstrated in what we do. So the Bible says that faith without works is dead. So there is a there is not only a correlation there between faith and works. Uh, it, it is not possible for me to say that I have my faith in Jesus Christ and to not do works that represent that. It is not possible for me to say on Sunday that, oh, how I love Jesus and he lives in my heart and I, and, and I belong to him and yet my works testify of something else. What we're saying here is our faith and our works, they go hand in hand. They are joined together. They're, one is not possible without the other. So if you tell me today that you know Jesus Christ and you, he is your Savior and your Lord, then there better be some works of faith in your life. And if that's not the case, then something is wrong. I'm not saying you're not a believer. I'm not saying you're not a Christian. What I'm saying is this, is that if you have faith in Jesus, there will be works that testify of that. That's just the truth. Now, True faith is based on what God says and is demonstrated in what we as believers, as Christians do. Faith begins where possibilities, everybody say possibilities. Faith begins where possibilities ends. In other words, when somebody says something is impossible, we know the Bible says that with God all things are what? Possible. Now, listen. Listen. Don't get confused, okay? We don't live in some kind of pie in the sky. Uh, we don't just get to say, well, hey, I'm just going to have faith that this is going to happen and it's going to happen. That's not what we're talking about here. We're going to talk about this some more, but I want us to understand that, that we don't have just this, this blank list uh, that we can just write down and say, okay, God, this is what I want and this is what I believe. I believe you can do that. I know all things are possible, so uh, God, make me hit the lottery today. Shame. You know, God help you if you're, if you're doing it, okay? Listen, God provides for us. I don't need to put my money on a ticket to win me uh, my, my, you know, what I need to live, what I need. God is taking care of that. God's taking care of that. He t in, in his word, he tells me that, listen, if, you'll be, if you will uh, put me to the test, put me to the test, Tithe, give your money, give 10% of the 100% that I give you. It all comes from God, 100%. He says, listen, if you'll give me 10 of those, that's what a tithe is, a tenth. If you'll give me that and trust me, put me to the test, you'll see that I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you can't receive. You know what that means there? If you go all the way back to the Old Testament when the, the story of Noah and, and he built the ark and God, the Bible says God opened up the windows of heaven and the rain came down. That's what it's talking about. God's going to pour out a blessing just like that came down and covered the earth for us if we're obedient and give it to him. That's our God. Faith begins where possibility ends. People with faith do things for God and God does things for them. 
Faith is not a luxury. It is a necessity. Amen? We just read, without faith it's impossible to please God. It's not a luxury, it's a necessity. Faith is for ordinary people, not just great leaders. See, we read the Bible and we think, man, if I could only be more like them. Can I just tell you, the, the, the people we read about in the Word of God were people who were ordinary people who lived in circumstances similar like to us, maybe a different world, different time, all those things, but they had the same challenges and temptations and all those things that come, all those things come towards them. They were able to follow God and keep the faith. You and I have something they didn't have. We have someone they didn't have. He is the Holy Spirit of God. He is who lives inside of us. He is who dwells inside of us, who guides us, who leads us, who convicts us, who convinces us when we're, he, conv he convinces us when we're right. He convicts us when we're wrong. He reminds us of that relationship that we have in Jesus Christ. He, he, he convinces, he convicts us. He, he reminds us that we need to repent when we do wrong things. We sin against God to get us back into fellowship with God. Faith is, not, is for ordinary people. Everybody say ordinary. ordinary. You know what I looked in the mirror this morning? I seen somebody who's ordinary. Yeah. I seen somebody who's ordinary. But the same faith that we see that God gave to what we would call extraordinary men and women who love Jesus and who serve God, men who died because of their faith, that same faith you and I have when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. So we're talking about faith, believing without seeing so the question we might ask is this so uh, how do we get faith where does it come from that's a good question it's one that we need to we need to answer and talk about look at look at Romans hold your place in Hebrews go over to Romans chapter 10 Romans chapter 10 when you get there say I'm there okay Some of you are cheating because I'm still trying to turn there. <laughs> Romans 10, okay? Now we're trying to answer this question again, okay? So how do we get faith or where does it come from? What is, who is the source of faith or what is the source of faith or how do we get faith? Maybe this morning you're thinking, well, preacher, I, I hear what you're talking about and, and, and you know, I, I really want to understand faith. I really want to know uh, how I can have faith. How can I receive faith? Where does it come from? You know, I hear you talking about all these things about, you know, the hall of faith and how people, were, you know, in the Hebrews 11 were placed in the word of God talking about their faith. You know, how can I be the, like that person? How can I be a person of faith? Well, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, and Romans 10 is, a, is a, uh, a chapter in Romans that we read a lot uh, and talk about when it comes to salvation, all those things. Look at chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith, everybody say faith. faith. So then faith comes by what? Hearing. hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Very simple, okay? Very simple. The word says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And let's talk about that verse just for a minute, okay? If you go back up to Romans chapter 10, verse, verses uh, 9 and 10, look up, there at that ver look up there at those verses, one that we used in the Roman road, leading somebody to Christ. It says that if, you, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be what? Saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. Verse 13. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
We usually come to that point. We get there, and listen, if you like to confess, you know, you like to accept Jesus Christ, you know, call upon the name of the Lord. You'll be saved. Whoever, Jew, Greek, doesn't matter. And in the fourth chapter, uh, verses 14 down through 17, it's talking about Israel and how they rejected the gospel. They rejected Jesus. And then again, verse 17 again, it says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, faith... So then faith, the first word we're going to talk about, uh, faith, it means here in the, in the Greek, persuasion. Everybody say persuasion. Persuasion. Conviction. Belief. So then persuasion, conviction, belief. We're talking about faith. We're talking about faith, okay? We're talking about faith in, in the Lord, faith in God. Where do we get it from? For, it says here, so then faith. Our persuasion, our conviction. How can I stand here today and know today in my heart that yes, I've lost a good friend, a brother in Christ whose name is Bob Franks, but I'm telling you what, I will see him again. He is in glory today. He is experiencing no pain and joy with Jesus. That's my conviction and that's my faith. And that is based, as it says here, it comes by hearing and hearing what? By the word of God. So then faith, my persuasion, my conviction, my belief, it comes by hearing. Now, hearing there is a word that means to give audience or to come to the ears or, or to have something preached to us, if you would. So it's talking about faith, our persuasion, our conviction, our belief. It comes or its source comes from hearing our giving audience to or coming to our ears Basically, we understand the word, it says here, uh, and hearing, what does it say? By the word of God. Now, look at these. We're talking about hearing, again, giving audience, coming to our ears, being preached to by the word of God, the utterance or the commands of God, the very words of God, God, God uttering or speaking either, uh, you know, and, and we, we know it that at the beginning, the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth. How did he do it? He spoke it into existence. God spoke it into existence. He said it and it happened exactly as God spoke it. We understand that that we're talking about God uttering. And not only do we, in the, you know, we know that God spoke that, but we know that God's written word or God's spoken word is, this word is God breathed. God gave this book to us. Through, Through many authors over the course of time, he gave us this book. It is God's word. It is the very words of God. It says, faith cometh by hearing, giving audience to, being preached to, or being, being told, and hearing by the word of God. So the source of faith, it comes to our ears, and what we hear, it must be, our, our faith must be based on what? On the word of God. It's not some, some, again, pie in the sky, something I can name it, claim it. I want this vehicle over here. I want this fancy car over here. I want this beautiful home over here, whatever it might be. I, I want this. I want that. So I got faith that God's going to give it to me. Listen, if it's source, the source of faith must come from the word of God, the very words of God. It's not a pie in the sky something. So our faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing, us giving audience, hearing the word of God. So today, what you're, what you're hearing the word of God today, we're proclaiming the word of God, and God is going to give you, if you listen to the word of God, he's going to give you the opportunity to have faith today. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. Not from some preacher, not from some you know, I'm not saying that preachers don't preach the word of God. I'm just saying, listen, your hope don't need to be in me. Your faith doesn't need to come from me. Your faith needs to come from God. It better be God's word. It better be the source of where your faith's coming from. Amen. Don't have faith in a politician or anybody like that. You better have your faith hooked up in Jesus and the word of God. Period. End of story. And then over in Romans chapter 15, verse number 4. Turn over there. Just a few pages over. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Chapter 15 of Romans, verse number 4. Let's go back and start in verse number 1. 
It says, we then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Well, if we stop there, we could dwell on that for a while, couldn't we? Not pleasing ourselves. Verse number two, let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification or building up. Not tearing them down, not, not pointing fingers or talking about how sorry they are or whatever. They didn't do this for me and, you know, this kind of stuff. I did this for them. They didn't do this for me. He says, listen, building them up. Look at verse 3, for even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. For whatever things, listen, here's the verse, for whatever things were written before were written for our, what? Learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. All right, let's talk about that verse, verse number 4. For whatever or whatsoever, whatever, and whatsoever in the King James, whatso, what, whatso, whatever, I'm sorry, in the, my, my mouth is getting ahead of my brain, okay? Um, that, that happens a lot, all right? Sorry. I just asked Linnea, all right? Okay, look at the verse again, verse 4. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning. Let's talk about that first part of that, okay? So we're talking about, first of all, everybody say written. Written aforetime or written before, okay? Basically what it means, it means that they have been written previously to announce or they've been prescribed before. It says we're written for our learning. God's word was written for our what? Our learning, our instruction, our teaching, our spiritual instruction, our spiritual teaching and learning and growing. That we through patience, through endurance and constancy and comfort or consolation or solace of the scriptures of God's written word might have. Now, everybody say have. Now, I like the word have, okay? It's a little four-letter word, but it's important. Because that word have means that I hold on to something. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. Listen, when I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, that faith and that hope and that assurance that I have in Christ it is a it is something I hold as a possession it belongs to me nobody can take it away from me and if you know Jesus today and that relationship you have in him it is your possession it belongs to you the devil may come and attack you and tempt you and all these things. The world may tell you that Jesus is not, not real and he's, he's just fiction and he may have come and been a good man, but he wasn't your savior. He didn't die on the cross. He sure didn't rise from the dead. I'm telling you, my faith is something that God has given to me as a possession. It belongs to me. And I'm telling you, if you know Jesus today, it is your possession. It says to have, what does it say? What's the word there? have hope now again have means to hold as a possession it belongs to me have hope faith confidence certain expectation so where does faith come from where does faith come from how do we get it well, we get it, obviously, what we, what we hear from the Word of God, and that's what we base our, our truth on is the Word of God. We get it when we hear from God. We get it when, when God reveals it to us, and He gives us the opportunity. He gives us faith. He gives us faith to believe. He gives us the truth. Now, we might ask the question this, okay? Okay, preacher, you said it here, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. It's written before time. God, God wrote it down a long time ago. It's for our learning. It's for our benefit. It's to help us. It's so that we might, through patience and comfort of the scriptures of God's word, might have, hold as possession, faith and hope and assurance or expectation, okay? So what is faith? Everybody say, what is faith? What is faith? What is faith? I'm glad you asked, okay? Go back over to Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1. Can I just say this to you and for me today? God wants to give us faith. He does. Faith comes by hearing. This morning you've come here today and by your hearing, God's going to give you the opportunity. He's going to give you faith to, to listen. 
Now, whether you obey or not, remember what we said. Faith without works is dead. So you can hear the word of God today. You can, you can hear it. You know it's true. Yeah, the spirit of God convinces you of that. You hear that today. He takes the blinders off your eyes. He's convinced, he's convinced you. He's convicted you that you're a sinner. You're lost. You don't know Jesus Christ. So today, he gives you the opportunity to not only have faith, but to express. And remember, you've got you to marry those two things together. Faith with works. So you can believe today, but if you don't show the faith of coming to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior and saying, yes, yes, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. Save me. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me and make me a new person right now. He will. What is faith? Well, verse number 1 of Hebrews chapter 11. The Scripture says... Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So first thing is, faith is confidence. Everybody say confidence. Confidence. Now, I consider myself to be a confident person most of the time. There are some times I'm not confident. Anybody ever have a challenge with confidence sometimes? Okay, I got it. Listen, I, I'm there with you sometimes, okay? Uh, I mean... This last week, uh, you guys are know we're in a building project, which has turned into a big building project um, and keeps getting to be a bigger building project, uh, which there's light at the tunnel. I'm just not sure how big the light is yet. But anyway, um, this last week, um, myself and my, uh, the fellow who helps me, Anthony, we're, we, need to, we need to build these um, porch beams. And these porch beams are, are like 26 feet long, they're two feet wide and they're inch and three quarters thick. And we've got to make two of those together for each beam. Three 24 feet beams, okay? Well, I mean, that, that doesn't sound too, too hard, right? You just take them out. You've got these screws. We put them in there, put them together. All these things, we get them all done. We get them set out there. We drag them out there, got it all put together. Uh, and then I'm looking up there. These things got to go eight feet in the air. It's me and him, okay? Listen, Anthony's, I told my wife not long ago that, that this project's been done by a man and a half, okay? And I'm the half man, all right? I'm the half, okay? It's, I'm not the whole, I'm the half. But I know Anthony, he's, he's strong, but he's not that strong. And I know me, and I'm not that strong. So how in the world are we going to get these things up here? I, I, I have confidence that it can happen because I've done it before, but I have less confidence because I, I know me. I'm 58 years old now, and Anthony's, you know, even though he's strong and all this stuff and everything, he can't do it by himself. So we all struggle, and we did get the beams up, by the way. Not by pushing it up like this. We had a tractor, okay, that helped. The tractor became our, you know, source of getting it up there. But anyway, that's all done and said. And my wife's happy about that. But I'm talking about confidence. Everybody say confidence. We struggle sometimes with confidence. Listen, faith, faith is confidence. It says, now faith is the substance. Substance there is, the very word substance there means confidence, <laughs> assurance of the things, what? Hope for. There's that word hope again. To expect with confidence as though you already have it as good as done. So in other words, when I talk about my confidence in Jesus Christ, which never, listen, I am never, I am never challenged when I, you know, whether I believe that Jesus can do anything. I know in my heart that he can. The problem with that is this, is that I look in the mirror. Anybody have that problem? You look in the mirror. You think, Jesus, I know Jesus is able. I know he can do it. Then I start thinking about my part in that. Because I know me. I don't know all of you. I know many of you, but I don't know about your confidence. Sometimes I, that's a challenge for me. When we talk about faith, faith is confidence. It is, it is confidence and assurance. It is the expectation and understanding and belief that whatever that God has promised me, I may not have it at that moment, but I, I might as well have it. I'm not in heaven today, but I'm, I'm as good as there right now. I'm not there today, 
but I'm going to get there because God has promised me. I put my faith and trust in Jesus, and because I've done that alone, listen, I'm going to go to glory. I'm not there today, but I'm going to be there for sure, okay? My confidence and my, my faith is, is that I'm not there, but I'm as good as there. And listen, if you don't have that today, if your faith is not confident, if you don't, you don't have the faith that we're talking about here today, full expectation, full assurance, as though you already have it. Listen, my friend and brother Bob Franks today, throughout this process, so he's been battling and, and working and trying to get better and all these things. Listen, there was never a moment in his, in his conversation that his faith ever wavered. Listen, he said, listen, I win if I, if I pass, I win if I stay. I'm a winner either way. He knew for sure, without a doubt, that when he took his last breath on this earth, he was in glory with Jesus. That is faith and confidence that we're talking about here. So faith, first thing is, it's confidence. Now, wow. Let me ask you this question. And we're going to wrap it up like this, okay? Everybody say okay. Okay. I thought you'd be happy with that. All right. We're talking about faith, okay? We're talking about faith. That's not a big word. Faith is not a big, long word. But faith is something that God gives us. He speaks to us from his word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God. Listen, every one of us today in this room, we've heard the word of God. Amen? We've heard the word of God. The Bible says about the Word of God in the Old Testament that my Word will never return void. So what's happened today is God has spoken to us. And listen, wherever you're at today in your life, wherever you're at, whether you're on the mountaintop or you're in the valley or somewhere in between, everything's going great, everything's going south. Everything is all good, everything's all bad. Listen, God has met you right there today. That's what His Word says. That's what his spirit does. He meets us right where we are. So when we come here and we hear God's word, what, I, what you hear or what somebody else may hear, yes, it's the same words coming from the preacher, but the, but the spirit of God takes it and meets you right where you are. If you need Jesus Christ, what he's saying to you is, listen, I love you. I died for, my son died for you. I want to save you today. Or if you're in some kind of financial issue, he's saying, listen, I, I am your hope. I will help you. Trust me. Give it to me. If you've lost a loved one, someone, he is there. He's saying, listen, I am your comforter. I am your strength. Lean on me. Right where we are. Right where we are. He says, have faith. Believe me. Trust me. Today. I'm enough. You don't need anything else. You just need me. Just give it to me. And we get that. But the problem with me and most of us, we want to help. We want to hold on to what we can do. See, faith means, faith means that I let go and I let God. Can I ask you a question today? Where are you at today? Where in life are you? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is enough. And he's here today. He's here today through his spirit. He's spoken to us by his word. He's asking us to have faith. We've got to put our faith to our feet and our actions and what that might mean is today maybe he's given you faith to believe, to understand, to know that he loves you, that he'll save you, that he'll forgive you, that he'll be enough in that situation. But your prayers and your words and your actions have to show that. Have to show that. We know he's enough. Let's let him be enough. Listen, we look around and we say, where's everybody at? We don't have a full house. 
listen, where's our faith? Where's our faith? Listen, we seen yesterday what God can do. We seen yesterday what God can do, what He wants to do. We've got to put our faith to work. So let's pray together, okay? Father, thank you that faith is something that you give to us as we hear your very words. Now, Lord, as we have, you have given us faith and understanding, now it's time for us to allow ourselves to walk in that direction, to follow you to obey you. See, it's not enough for us to hear your word. We have to be obedient. That's what faith is. It's hearing and obeying. It's God giving and us doing. So God, now is the time for us to bring our needs, to bring our challenges, to bring our situation, to bring ourself and give it to you to have faith. God who created all things, the God who gave His Son Jesus Christ to die for us, the God who one day will return and take us to glory and be with Him, the God who brings peace and strength and comfort in times of loss and grief, who gives us joy and laughter on the mountaintops. God, you be glorified in this time of decision. Help us to be obedient as you've given us faith in Jesus' name. And all God's people said.